Good afternoon. It's everyone's favorite Dr. Soloway here. Um, a big hello out to Eduardo. A big hello to Dr. Monero. Everyone else who's uh, motivating me to keep making videos. Um, we had a really interesting uh, situation today. A woman came in the office uh, almost by accident. She was um, with somebody else. She was dropped off at the uh, building next door with a friend. Noticed there was a sign for a rheumatologist, walked in here, asked if she could be seen today, and indicated that she has scleroderma. So my assistant came back and said, we have a patient today for scleroderma. Would you mind seeing them? They're, would you mind seeing them? They're a new patient. So the, the case is um, really interesting. So if you're in medical school, if you're a doctor, if you're not a doctor, well, if you're not a doctor, you couldn't care what I'm talking about. You'd rather be watching Lost in Space. But if you're a doctor or a medical student or a room fellow, you really need to hear this case. This is a great case. So I walk into the room, 25-year-old black female, very, very sweet person, very nice. Um, immediately upon entering the room, I could see she had both proximal and distal skin involvement. I could see her upper chest. She had um, chest uh, wall skin involvement. No surprise, she had facial skin involvement. And of course, you guys know that facial involvement is sort of, sort of a null area. It does not it does not have anything to do with the prognosis. Um, well, distal involvement usually is a better prognosis, and proximal involvement is a terrible prognosis. Facial involvement does not favor limited scleroderma, nor does it favor PSS or progressive sclerosis or just scleroderma. So the first thing I noticed is that this patient had diffuse uh, systemic sclerosis. Um, so uh, rather than sitting down and taking a long drawn out history, I just started uh, getting into the questioning right away. But uh, she answered a lot of the questions just by sitting there. On her knuckles, she had calcinosis that were extruding through the skin. And when I asked her, does white uh, paint like material come out? She said yes all the time. Uh, we talked about uh, Raynaud's, but we didn't really have to talk about it because she had a large digital infarction on the left fourth finger, which um, was infected, severely painful, infarcted. Uh, of course, I don't know at this time whether or not uh, she has osteomyelitis or anything like this. And at that moment, of course, I didn't know how long it had gone on. It had been going on actually for two to three months. So here's one thing that's interesting. Thing number one is that she tried to get into her rheumatologist, who she had been seeing for the past few years, and um, she was basically told, uh, go to the emergency room. So she did. The emergency room essentially said, if you have scleroderma, there's nothing we could do for you, which again is no surprise. So um, anyway, so I explained to her that um, she did in fact have severe Raynaud's, and it caused digital infarction, and uh, we went through this. And we talked about some of the different ways that we were going to approach this. We were going to treat the infection, what antibiotic we'd use. We used, um, in her case, uh, Augment 875 BID. Um, how we're going to help her with her pain. We're going to use some narcotic. We're going to use um, lidoderm patch. Um, in addition to adding nitroglycerin paste, um, we're going to switch from aspirin to Plavix. Um, we're going to try to find out why she's been on, um, Celsept. We have no idea. The only reason I could think would have been if she has an overlap of lupus protecting her kidneys. However, there was no blood, uh, for me to look at. There was no urine for me to look at. But another interesting fact is the woman's blood pressure was about 178 over 108. And you're going to, you're going to fall over when you hear this. She was on an ARB. Not an ACE inhibitor, but an angiotensin receptor blocker. ARBs are not indicated for scleroderma renal crisis. In fact, if you guys ever use an ARB for a scleroderma patient's hypertension, don't ever call me for an expert witness because you're, you're done. So if for some reason or another the patient either can't take or tolerate an ACE inhibitor, you better use Procardia. Uh, I strongly urge this. And I was horrified, horrified to see that this poor person was uh, getting the wrong medication. Absolutely horrified. Um, so I told the patient, you know, this is a very serious uh, thing. You have accelerated hypertension. If we don't control it immediately, you can have what's called the scleroderma hypertensive renal crisis and lose your kidneys. 
So um, it was either go right to the pharmacy and start taking um, Captopril 100 milligrams four or five times a day, or, you know, basically go to the hospital. So here's what we're dealing with when, you know, within 10 minutes of the visit. So we, we got back to the rest of the history. So um, with regard to limited scleroderma, she had uh, four out of the five uh, hallmark things. She had calcinosis that was visible. She had Raynaud's, which was, which was visible by vis-a-vis uh, -vis the infarct. Um, she clearly had dysphagia to solids, so she had esophageal dysmotility. Um, she had sclerodactyly as well as tightening of skin proximally, but she did not have telangiectasias. Her nail fold capillary bed analysis was abnormal, consistent with her diagnosis of scleroderma. However, um, so a couple of other things. So she fit four out of five of the crest things. So she does have limited scleroderma. However, because she has proximal skin involvement, she also has PSS. So um, a couple of points. One, patients with PSS can have features of limited scleroderma and vice versa. Second, um, without knowing whether she is centromere, positive, uh, centromere antibody positive or SCL70 or topoisomerase 1 positive, without knowing which antibody is positive, I'm not going to know if she's at higher risk of interstitial lung disease or if she's at more risk of pulmonary hypertension. I tend to think that her shortness of breath is probably going to be on the basis of both. Um, and whether she has both antibodies or one, I'm not going to be surprised either way. The question will be also, uh, does she have an RNA polymerase 3 antibody, which I suspect she might, um, given the fact that people who have that antibody are at a higher risk of scleroderma renal crisis or hypertensive renal crisis and scleroderma. Um, uh, that, that's a bad antibody to have if you're a scleroderma patient. Hopefully she doesn't have that. So we got rid of her ARB. We put her on an ACE inhibitor, um, very high dose, uh, five times the upper limit of normal from the package insert dose. Often pr presents a problem with the pharmacy, but they immediately um, call. I, they tell me, I tell them, and it gets fixed. So the patient um, was on Plaquenil, which I don't know why, and the patient was on Celsept, which I don't know why. From her history, there's no knowledge to her um, recollection of any proteinuria. And the only thing she did mention is hair loss. She described what sounded like non-scarring alopecia. So I said, okay, you know, maybe there was some overlap with lupus. Maybe she did have a double-stranded DNA positive. So I did leave her on the Plaquenil, at least for the moment. And I left her on the Celsep for the moment. No, in fact, you know what? I did stop her Plaquenil. Uh, but I did leave her on the Celsep because if there was something... Uh, renal involved uh, related to lupus, or you know, such as an overlap with lupus kidney disease, I didn't want to pull the rug out from under her. So um, all antibodies, titers, serologies were ordered. I won't have any information back for another seven to 10 days, but I'm pretty certain that with her getting frequent blood pressure checks, we will um, solve that problem. She'll also be getting her echo, echocardiogram, making sure we take a strong look at the right side of the heart, looking for right-sided uh, pressure elevations. We'll probably go straight to a right heart cath. Um, she'll need pulmonary function tests. She'll need um, high-resolution CT of the chest. And then whatever lung disease she ends up having will be treated accordingly. Um, so that's our scleroderma case for today. Fresh, uh, fresh case, a um, little bit mismanaged uh, prior to today. So moral of this story is do not use ARBs and scleroderma. Use ACE inhibitors for hypertension. Second choice is calcium channel blockers. RNA polymerase 3 antibody is a bad thing to have. Centromere antibody and um, topoisomerase antibody um, help predict the... Um, uh, yeah, the reason for lung disease or shortness of breath vis-a-vis -vis, um, centromere antibody goes with um, limited scleroderma and um, pulmonary artery hypertension, while um, the topoisomerase antibody is associated with interstitial lung disease. Um, okay, that wraps it up for tonight's uh, Dr. Steve TV. Everyone have a good night. Thank you.